Good morning, class. Happy Monday morning. Today we're going to take a look at everyday heroes. I don't know who your favorite is. Maybe Superman, maybe Batman, maybe Wonder Woman, maybe Catwoman, maybe the Incredible Hulk. Uh, but that's not the kind of heroes we're going to talk about today. Our essential qu question for this week is, how can one person make a difference? Everyday heroes. Comic book superheroes such as Superman or Batman are famous for protecting people. However, in real life, it is the everyday heroes. People who speak out against injustice or inequalities. People who work to help others who are the real superheroes. How has somebody made a difference in your life? Maybe you had a special mentor or a special camp counselor. Maybe you had somebody in your family who was always there for you. Maybe you had a teacher or a teacher's assistant or a pastor or somebody from church. That that person for you. Do you think it's possible for one person to create change and to make a difference? You bet it is. And what could you do as the last one to make a difference? Now you're supposed to come up with a few ideas here. What could you do to make a difference? Well, hopefully you're use, using your packets we sent you home to make some Christmas presents for somebody. That could make a difference. Maybe you were part of the group last year that picked up the stones at, at the lake and then wrote Bible passages on them. That could make a difference. All sorts of different ideas for you to be able to make a difference. This week, we're going to be studying biographies. Those are books written by somebody about somebody else that are true stories, and these people will have made a difference. Before we get to our story, let's check our, our vocabulary words for this week. This week, I'd like to teach you how to use your big books in conjunction with your small books to check out definitions for words. We have it in a sentence here, and a lot of times a sentence helps us figure out the definition. Joanne bought apples instead of grapes after she joined the grape boycott. Now, what's a boycott? If you had your big book, you can turn all the way to the back of the book. The last few pages have this glossary. And the glossary is just a definition of words. So here's the word boycott. It's a verb. It means to join others in refusing to do business with a person or organization. So for whatever reason, they decided that we're not going to buy grapes anymore. And that's because maybe the grapes were too expensive, or maybe that's because the workers weren't getting paid enough. Usually you would join a boycott to make the company lose money. And then when they lose money, they change. Our main read is going to be about that. Number two, encouragement. Hopefully we all know what encouragement is. It says the encouragement we needed to win the game came from the fans. When the fans really get excited at the game and they cheer for their team, sometimes that can help you win or have the energy to play harder. Here's what the definition is of encouragement. The act of supporting, the act of supporting or giving hope or confidence. Thanks for the encouragement of my teacher. I passed the test. Encouragement. Number three, fulfill. Now this guy's a mime, and what a mime does it is, is he acts and like pretends things. Like this guy might pretend that he's in some kind of glass box or something. Julius got to fulfill his dream of performing in the school's talent show. The word is fulfill. If we take a look in our dictionary, what fulfill means, it's right here at the bottom of the page, it means to finish or carry out. So he fulfilled his dream. That means he carried it out. That's what he really wanted to do. Number four, injustice. The children felt that it was an injustice that they were not allowed on the roller coaster because they were just too short. Could you imagine having them stand in line and stand in line and stand in line and you get to the front and then they put that little stick up on your, on your head at Six Flags Great America and you're just that much too short and you're like oh can i stand on my tippy toes or i should have worn my thicker shoes what is an injustice our glossary definition for injustice is unfairness something that is not right many people protest against racial injustice during the civil rights movement during this summer right an injustice not fair Although, it's pretty fair because the roller coaster here is only trying to make sure that everybody's safe. Okay, moving on to mistreated. Tom felt that the dog's former owner had harmed and mistreated her. You can kind of see because it doesn't look like the dog it was making eye contact. 
And unfortunately, sometimes owners mistreat their animals. Uh, the word for mistreated, the definition for mistreated is at the top of page 551. It says, treated badly or cruel in a way. The child mistreated the dog by pulling on its ears. I like it when they give us an example sentence. It might help me think of different sentences that I could have for those words. Protest. The children decided to protest the destruction of the forest. So they were going to tear down a forest, maybe a rainforest. We hear about this all the time. And so they protested. They said, save our, for our forest. Protest, as we find it in our glossary. Notice these words are all in alphabetical order, so we're just going one page after the another. It's the last word in the P's, right before the Q there, protest. It means to complain or express disapproval against something. That's very general. Here they're talking about a forest. This summer we were protesting because of the police brutality, and so we'd have different protests for different reasons. Two left, guys. We're almost there. Qualified. Dr. Smith is more qualified than the nurse to tell what treatment the boy needs. Doctors actually go to school way longer than nurses have to to be able to have those qualifications. There is a one, only one word in our glossary for qualified. It's today's. It's an adjective that says having the needed abilities for something, meeting the requirements to be qualified. I actually had to go to college for six years to be qualified to be a teacher. And the last one is registered. The woman gave her address so that she could be registered to vote. I like a lot of the words that we're having this week because they seem like they were hot topics in our world right now. We just had a big election where you couldn't vote if you weren't registered. And I'm guessing from the context who's registered means to sign up. Registered. Wrote on a list or recorded officially. My brother had to register to vote. Our biography this week is called Judy's Appalachia. And Appalachia is an area of mountains in the Appalachian chain. And she's upset because what they're doing here is strip mining, which they take all the nice green lush um, forestry off the mountain. And then they dig out the coal or the salt or whatever they're mining there. And she is telling them that this was really bad. Let's read this biography. Now remember, biography is a true story. This actually happened. Judy Bond's six-year-old grandson stood in a creek in West Virginia. He held up a handful of dead fish and asked, What's wrong with these fish? All around him, dead fish floated belly up in the water. The day began, that day began, a turning point for Judy Bond. She decided to fight back against the coal mining companies that were poisoning her home. War Fork, West Virginia. The daughter of a coal miner, Julia Judy Bonds, was born in War Fork, West Virginia in 1952. The people of War Fork had been coal miners for generations because coal mining provided people with good jobs. Coal gave people the energy they needed to light, turn on lights in your home, and to warm their homes. But Warfork wasn't just a place where coal miners lived. Warfork was the home of to Leafy Green Valley, or Hollow, Holler, surrounded by the Appalachian Mountains on every side. Judy's family had lived in Warfork for many generations. Judy grew up there, swimming and fishing in the rivers. She raised a daughter there. Mountaintop removal mining. Now, I guess you guys are probably already guessing what some of the things in a, a biography. Notice that we have these headings. Introduction, here's her childhood, and now let's get to the meat of the story. An energy company came to War Fork in the 1990s. It began to a process called mountaintop removal mining. Using dynamite, the company blew off the tops of the mountain to get at the large amounts of coals underneath. The process was quicker than the old method of digging for coal underground, but it caused many problems. Whole forests were destroyed. Now here's Judy. Judy Bond spoke out against the mountaintop removal mining. 
Dust from the explosions filled the earth and settled over the towns. Coal sludge. Now here comes the definition. A mixture of mud, chemicals, and coal dust got into the creeks and the rivers. Pollution from mountaintop removal mining began making people living in the towns below the mountains sick. Anytime we breathe in this dust, it's bad for our lungs. In this area where Judy lived, coal sludge flowed into the rivers and the stream. People packed up and left. Judy was heartbroken. The land she loved was being mistreated. She had realized that the valley that had always been her home had been poisoned. No longer a safe place to live. It had become too dangerous. Judy, her daughter, and her grandson had to leave. Working for change. Now there was the problem, the plot, and now let's kind of find the solution. Something had to be done about the pollution. Judy decided that it was important to protest against the strip mining and demand that it be stopped. She felt that she must try to keep the area safe for people. She felt qualified to talk to the group about the injustice of the whole towns being forced to move and the mountains and the forest being destroyed all because of strip mining. After all, she had grown up in a mining family. So now here's her qualification. She knew a lot about mining. She lived there. She saw the damage was done. And she was a, a person from a mining family. Now before we go on to the next paragraph, we're going to see in our biographies this week that we got these timelines. Judy was born. They had to leave. Judy was awarded this gold and Wait, that's in the next paragraph. And unfortunately, Judy's going to die at pretty young, age 59. Judy worked as a volunteer for the Coal River Mountain Watch, a group that fought against the mountaintop removal mining. Eventually, she became its executive director. That means she's pretty much in charge of it. She registered to take part in protests against mining companies. At the protest, Judy faced a lot of anger and insults. Why would they be mad at her? Well, if they stop all the mining people, that and a lot of people might lose jobs. Many coal miners were not opposed to the mountaintop removal mining. They supported it because they needed the jobs to provide for their families. Judy knew it would be impossible to boycott the mining companies. The coal miners could not afford to leave their job. Instead, she pushed for changes to be made to the mining process. Slowly, small changes were made to, pro to protect communities in mining areas. In 2003, Judy was awarded the Goldman Environmental Prize for her effort in activists, as an activist. So, let's review. Little introduction, her as a child, big problem, solution, and now we're probably going to get to the, the closing part. We're going to find out well, what happened to her. Sadly, Judy could not fulfill all of her goals. She was diagnosed with cancer and died in 2011. And this cancer is thought to have come from all the dust she breathed when she was younger, unfortunately. But her success had provided encouragement to other activists. Judy may not have been able to stay in her home, but her work will help preserve and protect the Appalachian Mountains and help others remain in their homes. How did Judy Bonds make a difference? Well, she was an activist. She spoke out. She talked about the injustice, and, and she tried to get the mining companies to change the rules so that it would be easier to protect the land, the land that she loved so much. Let's take a look at your assignment for today. Today is your vocabulary assignment, your normal Monday assignment. It's worksheet page 121. If you see that at the bottom here, 121, you may start by putting your name at the top. This is the one where you have to complete the sentence. It says, finish each sentence using the vocabulary word provided. And we have to make that word sound like it fits in the sentence, which means it doesn't always come right after it. Let's do a couple. I like to do this number seven down here at the bottom, encouragement. My brother was having troubles with his painting. So, my father gave him and encouraging, and I had to switch it a little bit, encouraging, pick me up. Your parents ever give you a little pick me up? Come on, you can do this. 
You've got this. So on that one, I changed the encouragement to encouraging so it fit better. So my father gave me an encouragement. Pick me up. Now, encouraging pick me up. Injustice number eight. The police officer told us injustice. Now, I, mm, I'm not sure I know that what I'm going to do for a sentence on that one. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to look it up. Now, I'm in my big book here. This is where we found all those definitions today. Injustice. Unfair. Something that is not right. Many people protest against racial injustice during the civil rights movement. The police officer told us about some injustices that happened at the mall this year. Now, guys, those I thought were the toughest two on um, this assignment. Some of the other ones were a little bit easier. Some of them were medium, but I think those were the toughest two. Your assignment is the top six, okay? One through six are yours. Again, if you have any issues or problems with them, see me on our Zoom call to get the help that you need. Then when you're finished, you can put this back in your folder. All right, guys, have a great rest of the day.